maayong aga sa inyong atanan. We are here again and we are glad that we will have this opportunity to meditate upon the Word of God in this uh, time of devotion. And as we look into the Word of God, we ask God for His guidance at tabuligan kita sa ginoo, kag maintindihan natin, kag makabulig sa atin kapag uh, tubo sa atin ng Christian life. The title of our meditation this morning is The Road from Unbelief to Faith. The Road from Unbelief to Faith. We are following the journey of uh, Abraham in the book of Genesis. And I believe that uh, this is also a journey of our life because his life is our life. It's a picture of our journey in our a Christian life. So as we continue the study on the life of Abraham and go with him in his journey of faith, because his journey is our journey, and we can easily identify with him in his struggles in life, uh, because we know that his life is characterized by ups and downs, mountaintop experiences, valleys, as as we have in our Christian life also. We must accept the fact that we fail. Uh, sometimes uh, we have that mountaintop experiences. We have, we have faith. We exercise our trust and faith in God. But sometimes we have, we have times of uh, failures. We are defeated. And God will help us through and gives us strength to get us back on the right path. We just need to trust Him and follow Him and do not even neglect the discipline and correction of the Lord. Because in the end, God will be glorified and He will be magnified in our journey of faith. Before we continue, let's commit this time to the Lord in prayer. Lord, Heavenly Father, we thank you once again that we can look into your word. Kagag ginatugyan naman ginoo ang ining pagtuon naman, buligi kami. Kag makabulig sa mga pagtubo. Kag pag mature sa amon nga Christian life. Ini ang amon nga pangamuyo na may pagpasalamat sa ngalan ni Jesus. Amen. Our text again is found in Genesis chapter 13. But before we go to chapter 13, we will read uh, uh, chapter 12 because this is where it uh, where it uh, he began his journey. Because if you remember the last time na uh, uh, sa atun ng meditation, I we studied the life in chapter 12 or the life of Abraham in chapter 12. So I will read chapter 12 verses 7 to 9. Then the Lord appeared to Abram and said, To your descendants I will give this land. And there he built an altar to the Lord who had appeared to him. And he moved from there to the mountain east of Bethel. And he pitched his tent with Bethel on the west and Ai on the east. There he built an altar to the Lord and called on the name of the Lord. So Abram journeyed, going on still toward the south. Ini nga dinalan. It this is the first entrance of Abraham. So nagsulod nasa dito sa ginatawag na Promised Land o sa Kanaan. But as we read further in the text, something happened there because. Uh, there was famine in the land, and then the Canaanites were living in the land, something that Abraham did not perhaps expect. So, uh, because of the famine, he went down, he went down to Egypt. And in Egypt, did to gali natabo ini nga mga pag ganitong natun nga blunder or lack of faith and uh, his failure in trusting God, and he suffered humiliation by uh, by the king of Egypt, Pharaoh. 
And after that, after that defeat in Egypt, Dirina sub chapter 13, I'm going to read uh, beginning in verse 1, as a verse 4. Then Abram went up from Egypt. He went up from Egypt. He and his wife, and all that he had, and lot with him to the south. Abram was very rich in livestock, in silver, in, in, and in gold. And he went on his journey from the south as far as Bethel, to the place where his tent had been at the beginning, between Bethel and Ai, to the place of the altar which he had made there at first. And there Abram called on the name of the Lord. Kung, uh, if you can notice here yung unang passage na binasa natin sa Genesis chapter 12, verses 7 to 9, at saka itong 13, 1 to 4, they are parallel passage. Uh, uh, yung sa first part ay yung pagkatun niya, pagsulod niya dito sa promised land, and then nag-exit siya, nagkato siya sa Egypt. And here in chapter 13, nagbalik na siya dito sa Kanaan. And the places that was or that were mentioned, the path that he took, no, yung kanyang direction and the places that he, that he went are the same places. In other words, he retraced, ginbalikan niya to mga lugar na hindi niya naiyagin halinan. So, the, uh, as I said, the, the title of this meditation is The Road from Unbelief to Faith. And we will journey with him on this road from unbelief to faith. This is also an illustration of uh, of the word of God, of the power of the word of God. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, amuna ang uh, passage that we always use to show the power of the word of God. And this is what we call the inspiration of the scriptures. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, it says here, All scripture, tanan nga kasulatan, O ang bilog nga uh, kasulatan, ang Bible. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable, okay, profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. There are four things that the Word of God will do here in our lives. Uh, uh, it is profitable, siling niya, siling, siling niya diri, una for doctrine, or in other translations, for teaching. Ang kasulatan o ang pulong sang Diyos uh, is, uh, one purpose is to, to teach us, to give us the right doctrine, to teach us the truth. Amunin ang ginambal diri is profitable for doctrine or for teaching. Ginatudlo sa aton kung ano ang kamatuuran. Kag amuna, nahibaloan ni Abraham, kag gintudloan siya sa ginoo, ginhambalan siya, napagkatok siya diri. And then another purpose of the word of God based on 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. Silingya diri, uh, not only is uh, profitable for doctrine, silingya, for reproof, for reproof, or rebuke, it means it is uh, it teaches us uh, kundiin kita nagakasala. It helps us to realize where we have fallen or we, we have where we have gone wrong, where we have disobeyed, where we have gone astray. Okay, so ginatudluan kita. It rebukes us uh, where we have fallen or where we have uh, strayed away from the truth. Otherwise, we will not realize that we have already drifted away from the right living. So the Word of God is profitable, una, for teaching us the truth, and secondly, for rebuking us, especially when we get wrong. And then, 
Uh, number three, for correction. Okay, for correction. It means nga hindi lang ginatudlo sa atin kung din kita nagkasala, kundi ginatudloan man kita kung paano kita maitadlong sang Diyos. To get us right. To help to correct us. To discipline us. And then, ikaapat, uh, profitable for teaching or doctrine, for rebuking, for correcting, and then for training in righteousness. For training in righteousness. Agud nga magapadayon kita sa matarong uh, pagkabuhi. And so, this is what happened here in the life of Abraham. He, he was taught where he should go. And when there was trial and there was problem, he drifted from that path and he lived a life that is characterized by unbelief or unfaith. He, he operated on the basis of the lack of faith. And, uh, but here in this, so in this instance, God uses circumstances. God uses circumstances. Uh, we never find in this passage that God was talking to him, to Abraham, or correcting him, or rebuking him, but God uses circumstances. He used uh, a, a, a series of events and he used people, especially, uh, so in this case, specifically uh, the king or Pharaoh. And uh, it also teaches us to be sensitive to how the Lord will lead us back to himself. Uh, so what happened here in Abraham or in the life of Abraham in Egypt, uh, una, nagkaroon siya ng ginatawag na sense of guilt. Sense of guilt. When he went to Egypt to... Uh, to run away or to avoid uh, uh, a severe famine because nagkaroon ng tagutom and uh, his, he experienced, he realized that his very life and the existence of his family was at stake, was at risk. So he went to Egypt, but uh, pag abot dito sa Egypt, he realized that he had a complicated circumstances. He realized that they will they will be living uh, in the midst of of uh, uh, strangers or other people. So, and then because of that, uh, so he nakaroon siya ng fear, and then because of that, he because of his fear of his life, then he. Uh, he resorted to scheming by deception or by lying. So we see here there is a sense of guilt that uh, we realize that one sin leads to another sin. Kasi kinahanglan si Ur sa iya nga pagtakpan niya ang iya nga unang asala. Okay? So that one sin leads to another sin. And uh, and not only one sin leads to another sin, but also it will involve not only himself, but other people as well. Sa iyo nga pagkasala. Una, si Sarai, nag uh, sila. And then secondly, the, the, the king himself, Pharaoh, was also involved in this series of sins of uh, Abraham. So in other words, not only will it affect himself, but also it will affect other people, his relationship with other, other people. So that's the, uh, that is what happens. You know, that, that is what happens when we sin and then when we cover our sin, we fail to repent of our sin and then we realize that we are already drifting away further and farther away from God. Okay? And then not only there was sense of guilt, there is also a great 
loss, great loss. Uh, the one that he wanted to protect for himself, ang iya kabuhi, and also yung uh, Sarai, his wife, are the ones whom he lost or almost lost. Uh, uh, there's a great loss, not only that he almost lost his wife, but he lost also his dignity as a person because after the rebuke from the king himself, nahuyaan siya. Deep humiliation. He lost his testimony as a believer in God. Okay? In other words, he lost his ministry. He lost his spiritual heritage. And this is what happens when we continue living in disobedience and we fail to repent and we fail to get back on the right path, we lose a lot, a lot of things. Madula sa aton. Madamo gid ang madula sa aton. The things what we want to achieve for ourselves, we lose it. We lose the world. We lose relationship. We lose our testimony. And we lose the power of the ministry because of our failure to correct ourselves. And then, not only there was sense of guilt, there was great loss, and finally there was here a shameful uh, uh, a, a shameful rebuke and humiliation. God used, of course, circumstances, and then he used Pharaoh uh, to rebuke him. Uh, uh, ang natabo diri dito sa Egypt, Abraham, when he was discovered, when Pharaoh realized, or when he, when Pharaoh discovered the cover up and the lie and the deception, Abraham and his family, he was forcibly deported, deported, perhaps declared persona non grata sa Egypt. Because the text says that ginhambalan uh, niya uh, ng king, uh, Pharaoh, ang iya mga agents, so ang iya mga uh, soldiers, or ang iya mga katawahan to, to forcibly uh, deport. Ginpahalin sila. Now, go away, depart from us, take your wife, here is your wife, get away from this place. Uh, so there was a sense of shame. There was uh, deep uh, rebuke and humiliation. Diba mo man ang matabo sa aton, mahuyaan man kita sa mga tao, especially sa mga non-Christians, kung sila pa ang mag sa aton because of our failure to live up to the standard of righteousness that we are, that we believe or that we teach or even preach. Uh, and uh, because of that, our testimony, Madula, mahuyaan kita, sila pa ang mag sa aton. Siguro mahambal sila na ikaw, Kristohanon, ikaw nga, nga mo na ang imo batasan. Uh, so, we lose a lot of things. Rebuke and humiliation. But one thing is good here. That when Abraham was, uh, when Abraham was forcibly deported from Egypt, nagbalik sila dito sa, uh, tawag na promised land or kanaan. There was a resumption of his spiritual activity, uh, activities. Pagabot dito, as we see here, sa chapter 13, verses 1 to 4. Let me read again, let me, Read again. Then Abraham went up from went up from Egypt. Take note of even this mga uh, mga words uh, like like in chapter twelve he went down. Uh, yung mga direction ba mga direction up and down when he went down to Egypt. Uh, of course, ge uh, geographically that is also true geographically. And sa verse thir chapter thirteen. Then Abraham went up from Egypt, he and his wife, and all that he had. And Lot went with him to the south. 
Abram was very rich in livestock, in silver, and in gold. And he went on his journey from the south as far as Bethel to the place where his tent had been at the beginning, between Bethel and Ei, to the uh, to the place of the altar where he which he had made there at first. And there Abram called on the name of the Lord. Amuli ang maayong na natabo sa iya. Uh, I believe that he practiced what we call uh, the yung repentance. First, uh, first John chapter one, verse nine, where it says, "If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness." So what Abraham did was to retrace the the path that he uh, abandoned in the first place. So pagbalik niya, amuman, the same places that he visited, he returned to these old places, places of worship. And there he built an altar again. Uh, and then he resumed his worship. And the text says that he called on the name of the Lord. So, uh, what we see here in the life of Abraham is that when we get off course, when we get off kung, kung madula kita sa mat, matarong nga pangabuhi, we fail, there is always a way of going back to God. First uh, John chapter 1, verse 9. As, some, as someone said that God is a God of second chance. In fact, God is a God of many chances. Not only of second or third chance, but He is a God of many chances. The world will, or Satan, our enemy, will discourage us. Uh, perhaps uh, uh, the world or the enemy will say that you are nothing, you are good for nothing, you cannot do anything for God. You are a failure. But God said, just repent. And then, so what happens here? Is that uh, uh, because of what Abraham did, he was restored and uh, he experienced again a revival of his spiritual life, his relationship with his, uh, with his family, and uh, he experienced again the blessing of God. So for us, this teaches us a lesson to go back to the basics, you see, go back to the basics. Ano yung mga basics na sinasabi natin? Okay, go back to the Bible. Okay, Bible reading. Kumusta gali ang ato nga Bible reading? Kumusta gali ang ato nga prayer life? Okay. Kumusta gali ang ato nga devotional life? A quiet time. Huh? Uh, kumusta gali ang ato nga church uh, worship? Or personal worship? Okay, so muna ang mga ginatawag nato ng mga basics. Now, back to basics. And then, number four, as we journey, as we, uh, as we go along with Abraham on his journey of faith, then we will find here in the text, as uh, we'll perhaps discuss later, uh, uh, if we have opportunity to continue with our journey, with Abraham because the uh, the next passage will tell us how he displayed uh, what we now, uh, the finest of his character, growing in Christian character. Okay, Because the following events will draw or will show Abraham in his finest, a man truly changed by God, more wise, more mature in character. So in conclusion, it teach, this journey of Abraham teaches us our journey in life. We acknowledge that sometimes uh, we think, you know, we, we decide, we make decisions not on the basis of faith. Kaya nagakasala kita, nahadlo kita, we fear, for, we fear for our lives, we are selfish. So get back to basics, our Bible study, 
uh, personal Bible reading, uh, devotional time, quiet time, prayer, and our worship. And experience the power of God. So may God bless this truth in our hearts, shall we pray? Lord, maraming salamat. Uh, because in the end, you're, you will uh, turn out victorious in our life because of uh, how you helped us through in times of difficulties, in times of problems. Even now, people experience many trials and difficulties in life. But we need not despair because God is our strength. He will help, he will help us through. So bless this truth, Lord, in our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen.